the beauty of holiness. So God, we thank you tonight. So God, we thank you. So God, we love you, we love you, we love you. We love you, we love you, we love you. We adore you, we adore you, we adore you. Come on, create that atmosphere of health, healing, and wholeness. Come on, come on, every worshiper, every worshiper. I'm not trying to cheerlead you. I'm just trying to remind you of who you are. Hallelujah. No matter what your day was like, this is the day the Lord has made. And I came to rejoice and to be glad. We see you as Father, and because we see you as Father, we don't have to beg you, we don't have to command you to do what you've given us authority to do. So Father, we receive the authority that you've given us. Matter of fact, we thank you for it. Thank you for the authority, God. We will never abdicate that authority again because we know who we are. I know who I am, I know who I am, I know who I am. He loves us, he loves us, he loves us. He loves us, he loves us. That's it, that's it. He loves us, he loves us. 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 to fight in the spirit we rest in your spirit we don't have to war God because <laughs> we don't have that kind of power we don't have that kind of strength so God we, 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 we apologize for using cliches in church that we picked up that sounded good but really didn't have any authority in it so Father we thank you now Thank you, God, for giving us the right words to say, even in corporate worship, that we would not confuse those who may not be at the, the level where they need to be and they might be led astray by some of our church conversation. So, Father, I pray that even in our worship, that we would be mindful that you are our Father. Govern our prayers, God, as you are our Father. So we pray to you, God, as our Father. And because you are our Father, we don't have to beg you. We ask because we know you love us. You love us, God. And so because you love us, we thank you. Thank you, Father. Be pleased with our worship tonight. Rest on the room. Rest on every presenter. Rest on every prayer. Rest on every worshiper. Rest on every reader. Rest on every singer. Rest on every minstrel. Every sound person, God. Touch their body. Touch their heart. As we offer up. As we offer up this thanksgiving to your name. Be pleased with these sacrifices of praise. As we offer up this praise unto your name. As we offer up this praise unto your name. This 
He can do anything but fail. Hallelujah. He has performed miracle after miracle after miracle in our lives. So just give him, yes, give him your praise and worship. If you believe in his power, our God specializes. There was a song that says, God specializes. And he can do what no other Holy Ghost power could do. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We believe in your power. We believe in your power. I believe. I believe. Do you believe? Type on the screen, I believe. He's a miracle worker. He has done it for me. He has done it for you. He has done it for plenty of people. I just want you to believe that God can do it. Whatever you're going through, God can do it. All you have to do is seek him. Seek him first. Amen. I am reading Genesis 1 through 26 and 27. 1, 26 to 27. Luke 10, 18 through 20. And Acts 1 through 8. 1, 8. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeliness that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Luke 10, 18 through 20. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample over snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Acts 1 and 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Let us pray. Father, we invite you into all the affairs of our lives. In this moment and time, we have needs we know that only you can meet. Help us to worry less about them and focus more on you. We pray that we can be, that we can, we won't be so concentrated on other things and not you that our hearts will love others as you love us. Father, help us to not be distracted or entangled in our own needs, that we forget about your will. Let us not get too busy trying to provide for ourselves and others, that we forget about you, the true provider. So today, we will take an inventory of our priorities, making sure you, our God, is first and at the center of all things. We will believe that our God has good plans for our lives because he holds the key to our flaws, he holds the key to our weaknesses, he holds the key to our insecurities, and yet he has never abandoned us. He still provides for us and he still loves us. So Father, help us to be disciplined in those areas that we need to change so our walk can be a blessing to others and they will see that the enemy will never win. In the mighty name of Jesus, so it is, amen. Hallelujah. We serve a God who can do anything. We serve a God who can do anything but fail. Hallelujah. Our power is in his hands. Hallelujah. He's the sovereign God of heaven. He sees all things. He knows all things. Hallelujah. He predestined all things. He sees the end from the beginning. And we trust him to be a miracle worker, to move in our situation, to move in our lives, to move in us in a way that makes us new. Hallelujah. So we just want to sing of a God who can do anything. Hallelujah. Sing, he's a God. 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 Who can do anything but fail?
Come on, don't stop your worship. Screen, God can do anything. 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 Praise God. Praise God. From whom all blessings flow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. with a lot of things but I need you to change the way you pray because when you see God as Father you're not waiting on Him to do you just thank Him for already doing come on practice if you will go ahead and type on the screen whatever you think you need Him to do I dare you to go ahead and thank Him for healing my body thank you for taking care of my family thank you for touching my children thank you for writing my situation
I'm on my way to the to the message, but I need you on this the last Sunday in the month of August. I need you to know that in spite of us, the Lord loves us. And I know so often we're told in church what we're not and what we should be doing. Listen, later for all that. I just want to love on a God who loves me in spite of me. He loves you in spite of you. That's not a license to quote unquote be you. But the, with, with, with all that you know, the Lord still loves you. And that's why we gather. We gather to give praise to God for his goodness. We gather to praise God for his faithfulness. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you need to know that God is faithful. But not only is God good, not only is he faithful, but I need you to know that God is a forgiving God. And I want to I want to lean in today to make sure those of you who are wrestling and wondering maybe if the Lord still loves you because of what what happened or, or whatever, I want you to know unequivocally the Lord loves you. Come on, put some hand claps on that screen and, and, and remind those. That. Now, if you're in this room, you can put your hands together. Come on, put your phone down and put your hands together. Hallelujah for the fact that he loves. Listen, I don't know about y'all, but this music ministry Bless me today. Come on, y'all give it up for my people, my people, my people. Come on. I want to call him Elder Byron. Brother Nate, Brother Xavier, Elder Cam is in the booth, and Sister Lucretia is helping make sure that our sound is great. And listen, these wonderful singers, can y'all put your hands together for the singers? Boy, they bless me today. That, that part where it says, praise God. Boy, that just was powerful. I'm telling you, our mail, it took me in. It was such a blessing to be in the room. I'm telling you to be in the room where praises go up to God. And uh, the late doctor, um, uh, I see him from the Corin Car Church in Houston. Dr. A. Lewis Patterson used to say our prayers do three things. And I, I know that I was talking about the praises go up to God, but I'm reminded of what he says our prayers do. Our prayers go up to God in worship. They go out into the world to work, and they go down into hell in warfare. <laughs> That's why y'all spend too much time warring with the devil. Listen, save your prayer language for the praise unto God here because, um, listen, at some point you need to know that we win. I got one clap in the room, but maybe you, okay, I told y'all why I'm loud all the time. I have lost some and I may lose some more, but one thing I will never be, I will never be a loser. <laughs> because I'm on the winning team. I'm trying to see if y'all understand. I'm not trying to cheerlead you. I'm not trying to cheerlead you. But I'm, I've been trying to lay this foundation for who you are as the church. I've been preaching and teaching for the last four weeks, and this is going to make five, and I don't know how many more I'm going to go, but I, I really need you to get who it is you are. The church is not in a post-pandemic situation. We're not going to be in a post-pandemic. Y'all take that out your vocabulary because we're not post. Matter of fact, as I told you, we, 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 we might be in the worst shape we've been in over the last 18 months. But that's okay. The church is already all right. Come on, don't y'all get depressed. Is my, are y'all still in here? What's, what, okay, all right. Y'all sleep? Wake up now. I was making noise when y'all sang, all right? Okay. All right, so it's important that we understand who we are as the church. And I'm going to get to that uh, because I need to thank some people because um, I'm, a, I'm a little older now. I'm, I'm, I feel good, and uh, 
All right, amen, all the way down to my shoes, I feel good, amen. And uh, I want to thank God for all the cards and all the kindness that has been shown unto me. I got a card right here in my hand from Pastor Fred, amen, and Sister Joyce Carter, amen. We love them, and I, I'm praying mightily. It simply says, praise God for each step that has led you to this birthday. Praise God for prayers answered and unanswered, for dreams come true and unexpected detours, for joyful testimonies and difficult tests. Praise God for this celebration of the day you were created, the moments of your life from then until now, and how far you've come by faith. With our love, Pastor Freddie and Joyce Carter, and it also says congrats on your preaching years in the ministry. Come on, let's celebrate the Carter family. And there are so many others that I do not have the time to read, but I have read them all and all of the gifts and the kindness. I think y'all might love me. No, 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 I'm just kidding. I know y'all love me. Uh, don't, don't, don't get it twisted. I'm clear. Uh, a friend of mine uh, who I love dearly, Pastor Reginald Perry, said that when the preacher starts expecting things, he's probably in the wrong business. Okay, let me talk to this side. When, when we start expecting people to do, we're probably in the wrong business. But it's important that whenever they do, that you're grateful and you're thankful. And I'm so grateful and thankful for you, the city of Zion, and all of our friends and partners from around the country who tune in. And for the last 18 months have been tuning in and sharing on Wednesday uh, the prayer call as well as the noonday enlightenment study time and let me just say to you beloved the best is yet better is 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 coming we are continuing to to do things around the campus uh, to get ready for whenever that time comes uh, and you know me it wouldn't be me if I didn't uh, have a couple of more projects already in the pipeline for you don't get weary and you're well doing I promise you uh, I ain't going to wear you out, but what the Lord has revealed to me is that we better do whatever we need to do and do it now, not because it's going to run out, but because this is the time to get the temple right. Amen. So we are looking forward to your continued faithfulness and your continued support as we continue to beautify the temple of the Lord. And I want to thank Brother V. Brother V has been doing an amazing job and... Boy, you know you got to fight V some days, don't you? <laughs> Boy, but V wouldn't be V if he wasn't V. Am I right? And so because of that, we love him and we want to thank that. Let me just say who that is. That's Brother Vincent Pittman. I almost made him a deacon. Lord Jesus. <laughs> Woo! Lord, but you need, you need, everybody need, air church need a Vincent Pittman. Nope, y'all can't have him. He belongs to me. He belongs to us. And because of that, we love him and we're grateful. Listen, grab your Bible and don't forget at the end of the worship, we are doing 75 minutes. We're practicing for our return to in-person worship and we're going to get it down. I promise you I'm not going to talk as long. I'm going to make sure. But uh, every Sunday we won't have the Lord's Supper. But this month we have been serving the Lord's Supper in our homes. And every Sunday we've been taking the supper together. And so today, on the final Sunday in the month of August, and I don't know about y'all, but I'm kind of mad. August seemed like it had somewhere to go. August came in running to September. I don't know. You clapping like you ready for it to go? Get out. Anyway. Uh, so, um, but nevertheless, today at the end of our experience, we will share the Supper of the Lord. And I pray that you know that we have been doing this to take it out of the ritual and to put it in the framework, type on the screen, framework, framework of reverence and relationship. That's what the Lord's Supper really is all about. And so I'm honored and I want to I wanna take it with you on this, the last Sunday of the month. And um, that way we can conclude in a great and grand way. Lift that Bible up, whether it's paper or electronic. This is my Bible. I can do. What it says I can do, it is the life-changing, time-altering word of the living God. Now, I know you know that um, this 
is uh, been an unusual approach to the sermonic time, and yet it is still the word of the Lord, and yet I've been focusing on making sure that during this time, as I've been talking about, uh, today makes the fifth part of the post-ascension church. Type that on the screen, the post-ascension church. And for those of you that this is your first time with us, I have been giving a definition of who and what the post-ascension church is, and uh, I want to be clear so that you get it, and at some point, they're going to post it on the screen so that you can know what it is, but I want to read it slow, and um, that way you can get it. The post-ascension church is an aggregate of believers, a congregation of the righteous that assembles to praise God to celebrate his goodness, faithfulness, and love. It gathers to arm, equip, and prepare, to celebrate the victories, miracles, and blessings from God. The church then deploys to reflect and represent God, to continue to celebrate our victories and blessings from God in every space it is in. I have been trying to lay this Armel foundation for the last few weeks, and it's, it's important that we must reframe the way we see the church of Jesus the Christ so that we are functioning properly as the postmodern post-ascension church. And with that being said, it is important that we know that the church for 18 months has not been closed. The devil is a lie and his mother-in-law too. But the church has been deployed. Type that on the screen, deployed. I'm going to get to that. I may not get to it today, but I'm going to get to it. But understand, it's important that you and I know that being the church, Nate, is not about how you feel. It's about a fact. And that fact is rooted and grounded in what the Word of God says that we are. I see y'all need Bible to back this up and let me help you to understand before I read and reread the scriptures that were read but but let let me go back to Ephesians chapter 1 22 and 23 the verses in the in the um uh, in in this version it says and he alone is the leader and source that he being Jesus and source of everything needed in the church stay with me God has put everything beneath the authority of Jesus Christ. I feel like lifting him up. Write that. He has given. God has put everything beneath the authority of Jesus Christ. And that is why you, when you pray, have got to see God as the Father and not some Santa Claus that you need to send all over everywhere. Uh, because, he says, and has given him the highest rank above all others. I'm, I'm in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22 and 23. No, notice this. And has given him. God gave Jesus Christ the highest rank above all others. Others, I'm coming for you. I'm coming down your road because some of y'all are trying to mix spooky stuff and make something spiritual out of it, and you all do not really understand the problems you are creating trying to combine Native American spiritless spiritual stuff with the Bible Holy Spirit stuff. Don't wait. I came loaded for bear today. Understand, when God gave Jesus authority over 
everything and look at verse 23. And now we, type on the screen, and now we, that's you, that's me, we make the we. Notice what he says. His church are his body, bring your voice down, TJ, are his body on the earth. His body on the earth. And that which fills him who is being filled by it. Now, um, I, I've been arrested and alarmed by some of the things I hear in the Christian community. Here it is. I understand that some of y'all are using crystals and burning sage to get the vibe right in your house and to push out don't look at me in that tone of voice I ain't scared of none of you but understand that do you know the origin of, of, of what they call uh, uh, I, I wrote it down because I knew it's called smudging okay see that's why you shouldn't be doing stuff and you don't know where it came from because uh, I'm coming to Genesis 1, 26, 27. Don't worry, I'm, I'm going to stay in the Bible because I don't want you to death think, oh, that's what he feels. No, not at all. Understand, burning sage is also uh, known as smudging, S-M-U-D-G-I-N-G. And it is an ancient spiritual ritual. Watch this because some of y'all going to give me back talk, but I know I'm right. Uh, but, but watch this. Native Americans. See, this is where your, your one part Cherokee come in. You know, I got Indian in my blood because I got that good her. The devil is a lie. Y'all quit playing. Understand. No, no, no. Stay with me. Because the Native Americans used it as a tribal practice. Now, here is the problem, saints of God. You can't pull certain sections out of a culture and practice it if you're not going to practice the whole culture. Now, I ain't scared of none of you. I'll add more to it before I take it back. Because understand, sage, some of y'all think, wars off bad spirits. But didn't I just read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22 and 23 and told you who you were? And if you are, since you are the church, Wilma, you don't need sage when you got the Holy Ghost. Oh, maybe you just got church. And you can't. You can't function without being in the building. Can I tell you something? Being in the building ain't going to help you if you do not know who you are. And that's why some of your faith is shook when things happen because you don't realize who you are. Go on and help us, TJ. I'm doing the best that I can. You see, the Holy Spirit wars off spirits for us. That's why all this war talk and war prayer, ain't y'all tired? I don't need to go to another. I don't need to go to another one of them where all we do is play that war music and walk around like we fight. No, that's more for you because you got to feel like you doing something to help defeat the devil, baby brother. You ain't strong enough on your strongest day to defeat the devil. That's why you don't have to spend more time warring and acting like you fighting. You ought to be tired by now and can I say I thought I thought I thought I thought the battle was already fought and the victory was already won what in the Sam Hill are you fighting for Okay, now I'm back because, see, some of y'all want me to go on. No, you keep on trying to ward stuff off. Let me show you. Let me show you. 
Because, see, I know I have to use the Bible, not the proof text, but to show you what the Bible says so that you know. And I know some, I know some of y'all going to say, well, where in the Bible does it say that I don't need to burn? Say, Listen, don't be a literalist now because the Bible told you to stop doing a whole lot of stuff and you ain't quit. So don't play. Okay. You see, when you understand the liberty and freedom that you have in Jesus Christ, you don't have to ward off and burn sage and crystal and all of that to purge and to purify no space. Listen, say, the, 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 the term is saging your house. And you are to, to cleanse or purify the space. And, and I'm, I'm trying to teach on this because I want you to know that, listen, if you don't know, you don't know. I, I'm not here to beat you up. I'm here to equip you and to arm you so that you don't have to fall prey to every new thing that comes across uh, 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 housewives of uh, Budapest or wherever, housewives of Atlanta, y'all pick up stuff and y'all start doing it at your house thinking that it's going to work. Listen, stay with the Bible. Come on, beloved. Use your power. I told you, I've been telling you for the last few weeks that you have power. Type on the screen, I have power. I have the power of humanity. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. Look at what it says in the English Standard Version. It says, let us make man, then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them, watch this, have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth, over all, over all the earth, over all the earth. I said over all the earth. Now, I, I don't know, last time I checked, we were on earth. Now, it says over all the earth and over every creeping thing. That creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God. In my goal day. He created him male and female. And he created them. And when you know who you are created in the image of. You don't bow down to no spirit that you don't know. And you can't see and all of that. Y'all don't have to do that. We got the Holy Ghost. We are powerful. I'm made in the image of God. I didn't say I was God, but I am in the image of God. And if God had power and does have power to push down valleys and raise up mountains, I'm not going to burn no doggone sage to run nothing out my house. I'm going to speak to it and say, you better get the H-E-L-L -L out of here. I see that hurts some of y'all a little bit. Because some of your friends have got you into this stuff. Well, it's because I know y'all. Let me, let me keep on moving because I done hurt some of y'all. But you know who don't care? It's me. Isaiah 54. I'm going on over here because I feel a little resistance from the camera. And uh, on the other side, and I need us to understand. I... Uh, Isaiah 54, uh, Lord, let me get to it. You, you, yeah, Lord, Isaiah 54 and 17. There he is. All right. Now, y'all still with me? Y'all still out there? All right, type on the screen. I'm with you, Pastor. You, you don't have my birthday, so I had to, uh, some things don't move as fast as they used to, so I have to take my time and, um, you know, uh, get to it. Isaiah 54 and 17. Now, now, now stay with me. I'm still, I'm talking about the post-ascension church because I, I don't want you to be bamboozled, led astray, run amok by all this, some of this new stuff that comes down the pike. So I need to give you, uh, remind you of who you are. Look at what it says. We, we like this part where it says, no weapon that is formed, my Bible says, fashioned against you shall succeed. But that's where we stop. But don't stop there. Keep on reading. 
Look at what it says. And you shall confute every tongue that rises against you in judgment. This is the heritage. I told you you had power, didn't I? Power as servants. Type that on the screen. I have the power of humanity and I have the power of servants. Uh, the power as a servant. The Bible says right here, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Now the question is, uh, are you a servant of the Lord or are you a churchgoer? Because ladies and gentlemen, you nor I know when we will ever have packed out rooms again without having to wear masks, without having to practice protocols. Because uh, uh, I ain't going to get into that today, but, but, uh, but, but the fact is we thought we were over this. And so we started relaxing. We thought because of our rights and our freedoms. But you see, the, the, the world doesn't care about exercising its freedom and its rights. But what about the body of Christ? When are we going to exercise our freedoms in Jesus Christ? Now, I'm not talking about the evangelical perspective of freedom because that doesn't give you the license to act a fool. That gives you a license to understand that I am under authority and therefore I use my freedom not as a weapon against other people but I use my freedom to participate in humanity because I am a part of humanity. I see this is boring y'all. But anyway it says um, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. The heritage of the servants of the Lord. There are some things that come to you because you are a servant of the Lord. I'm not talking about cars, clothes, and cash. Ain't, ain't y'all tired of that? Lord, God is bigger and more than cars, clothes, and cash and claiming stuff that ain't yours that if he gave it to you, you wouldn't have it for two weeks. I know y'all need more Bible. But let's go over to Luke chapter 10. Yeah. Help us, Pastor. I'm doing the best that I can. Luke chapter 10. And around verse, let's do, let's do 17. I'm, 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 still, I'm still on my assignment. Uh, um, because Luke chapter 10, verse 17, it says in in, in the English Standard Version of the Bible, it says, The 72 returned with joy, listen, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And you burn in sage. Now, I'm having fun with this because I really need to help us to understand how we disrespect God. I don't care if you don't like me. It's not a matter of you liking me. My assignment is to teach the word of the Lord, put it out here, and help you to grab your Bible as a believer and not some spiritually spooky stuff that you don't know what is tied and attached to it. Because believe you me, after sage and crystals and all that, it'll be something else. And, you know, the, one of these superstars or whatever, somebody you think got more money and all of this fame and wealth, they'll come along with it and it'll become hot like everything else. But let's, let, me, let me say this to you. I, I'm trying to root and ground you in what he said so that when she and he and them quit saying, uh, you not walking around tossed by every wind and weight of doctrine that blows around. I'm, I'm right here. He says, Lord, even, and for those of you who are thinking that these are not the 12 disciples, so listen, the 72 return with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us. Watch this. In your name. Type on the screen, uh, the name matters. And he said to them, uh, whew, 
I feel the wind. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you, watch this, and I got to almost quit. I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall. Woo, hurt you, preach TJ. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Is there anybody in the room or in your house that can read the word and say, I got power and I don't have to burn sage when I can tread on? Lord, the time runs like it got somewhere to go. Gave you power of humanity, power as servant. But I got to close. I got to close in a minute, one minute. Go over for our last time together. I'm going to just shut my other notes. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't, Monica, I don't ever finish. I just, I don't get done. I don't, I don't know. I just... I just have to stop, but, but, but go over to Acts, and, and, and then we'll be done. We'll serve the Lord's Supper, and then we'll be done. Thank you, Jesus. Can you praise God with me? Come on, praise God with me. Is this, is this helping anybody? Lord, I feel like I'm flunking, and no, no preacher wants to flunk on Sunday morning. I feel like I'm flunking, but that's okay. I've flunked many times before, nevertheless. Um, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, he says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Now, this was before Acts chapter 2. Y'all know what happened in chapter 2. The power came. So what happened? Did the power just go out? Not like the other night when the storm came and there were people that didn't have power for days. I'm not talking about that electricity power. But where did the power of the Holy Spirit go that you got to burn saves? Now you think I'm on a tangent. No, I'm trying to teach you so that you can know that you don't need to be inviting all these other spirits and spooky stuff in your house. And you wonder why you can't sleep at night. Now I'm serious as a heart attack and twice as deadly. That's what my daddy used to say. I said, Lord, I, you know, I guess, you know, y'all ain't never heard that. You mean y'all ain't never heard that? That's a new one? That's a Thomasism. Type it on the screen. That's a Thomasism. There we go. There it is. Brought a made up a word. No, I, no, I'm serious. Because listen, we got believers. Come on, help me close out. I, we, we got believers running around like you don't know what's going on. Come on, y'all. Come on, this, well, you got power. Why would you abdicate your power to something you really, you, you really don't, you, you don't understand? You're not Native American. We got the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is with us. He is the one that gives us power to make it through when we don't know how we're going to make it. Am I talking to anybody? Oh, I wish. I mean, it, it's clear. It says, and you shall receive power. After which, what? When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And what we're saying when we adopt all of these other things is that the Lord ran out of power. The Lord ain't run out of power. But your faith might be on life support. Because you've been doing, 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 doing. They sang about, I believe, I believe. No, the, the, the prayer reader said, she, she said, I believe, I believe. Do you believe? The 
that by his stripes I'm healed. Lay your hand on yourself. No matter what's going on in your body. And I know that there are those of you that are wrestling with COVID even now. And I'm praying mightily for you. You're wrestling with other sicknesses and disease. And the truth is we don't know what's working in our body because it hasn't manifest yet. But I believe God. I believe that by his stripes I am healed. I don't care what the doctor says. I've received the, the report of the Lord. Do I have any people that believe the report of the Lord? And the report of the Lord says, uh, I am healed. Mm. Yes, Lord. He says, you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And I don't know. I believe God. I, I, I believe God. I got power according to his word. And I'm going to stay with his word. Y'all, listen, please, please, if you are in my circle of influence, and what that simply means, if I am your pastor, please hear me. I wasn't trying to beat you up. I was trying to inform you, arm you, equip you so that you would know you got power. Don't you let anything dilute your power. And listen, don't be afraid to get you some new friends. If all your friends are doing it, it's okay. You don't have to do it. Just don't tell them. And if you're that afraid they're going to put you out the friend circle, maybe God is setting you up for a new set of friends. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Father, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you because you loved us. You love us. Oh, how you love me. And because of that, God, we thank you right now that we now can be the sons of God because of the power that you gave your son, Jesus Christ. We are his body in the earth. God, I pray for my sister right now. I pray for my brother that's tossed and torn. And I, and I feel the resistance. And it's okay because I know that this wasn't one of those kind of likable words. But, Lord, I, if, I, if, I didn't, if I didn't do it right, I apologize. But I believe I did. I believe I told them what you told me last week. I believe, God, I did it. I tried to say God's word today. Not my word, but your word. Because you said always, whatever we do, we ought, to, we ought to make sure that we remember you. And you said as you gave them the cup and the bread that we would do it in remembrance of you. And we're going to do that in a minute. But right now, Father, I just, I just pray for my brother and my sister. I don't have to open the doors of the church every week because I know, Father, that if there's somebody that doesn't know you, you are talking to them right now. They can accept you wherever they are because if they will cry out to you, you will hear them. You don't need us to be your middle people. You can reach them, God. And so if, if that is the case, God, I believe that you will connect them with a local ecclesia, a local place, a local pastor. I believe that. But right now, God, I'm more concerned about those that are in the body that seem to be fatherless that are not walking in sonship, that are not walking in relationship with you. Thank you, God, for sonship. Thank you, God, for relationship. Thank you for these that are knowing what you're inviting them into. We're not inviting the joint city of Zion, but we're inviting them into sonship with Jesus Christ who is the Son of God. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray, and we ask it all. And all the people of God said together, amen. Come on, clap your hands on the screen. I believe if you did that, then you're saved, and you are a part of the body of Christ. And let me thank you again for your faithfulness and your
commitment in giving and sowing and sharing and we have done amazing things and it's all been because of you and I want to truly love on you and honor you and thank you for all that you have done and if you have fallen off for whatever reason listen today is a good day it's the last Sunday in the month today would be a good day for you to re-up if you will we've got a new uh, system called push pay and uh, they gave me the cheat number but I left it out there um, amen you text citizen <laughs> and they're gonna put it the number on the screen <laughs> amen pray for me don't judge me I told you I had a birthday now all right um, I'm blaming everything on that right now. But uh, don't worry, I'm better, baby. Don't worry, don't worry. I'm like fine wine. I get better with age, y'all ain't talking to me. But so listen, we've got a new system that's more than a giving system. It's really, a, it's gonna bless you and you're gonna hear a lot about it. If you haven't seen the commercial already, uh, um, go on the website. I mean, not the website, but go on the Facebook page and then we will have it on the website so that you can stay connected. But listen, let's give now. You can... Uh, you, you can still mail it in to 701 Van Street, 43 Toledo, I 43604. And uh, you can do that. Or you can cash app. You can do that. But listen, listen, do it today. Do it today. Do it today. Do it today. Thank you so much. I pray that I've taught you enough about giving to where you know I'm not trying to twist your arm about a nickel or a dime. But I know a lot of people say all the church wants is money. Nope. But I promise you this. If you go to Walmart, they don't care how you feel. All they want is your money. If you go to Target, it's Target. Yeah. All they want, they don't, have no, they don't have no problem with it. All they want is your money. They really don't. You know, it's nice when they're nice, but really, they want that thing to go cha-ching. That's it. Right? So come on. Let's not, let's not cheat God and treat Walmart, Target, Neiman Marcus. See, that's for some of y'all. Saks and, yeah, some of y'all. Mm -hmm. Christian Louboutin and all that. Boy, my friend got some Louboutin tennis shoes the other day. Boy, I said, look at God. <laughs> anyway, nevertheless, so listen, listen. Go ahead and, and, and give. Do what you know to do is right. And so as we prepare to close today, I seem like I've been going back to St. Mary's and dad's church a lot in my mind and stuff like that. Uh, I'm going to be in Wichita in September and yet um, I, I, I just been hearing some of the old things that, that they would do even during the offering you know time and um, they would do this and, and, and listen I, you know I messed the key up so let me just do it without it says all things come on thee O Lord and of thine own have we given Boy, they would do that every, ah, uh, there you go. See that? Yeah, they would do that every, after every offering month. See, boy, I don't know where y'all been. Y'all don't know the, y'all don't know the, okay, I, I gave y'all the doxology last week and y'all act like y'all didn't know what that was. Um, y'all don't remember the doxology? Well, what churches did y'all go to in this town? I don't know what they were doing at that church. You know, okay, all right, don't don't cuss me out. All right, I'm just having fun. But listen, and 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 yet, um, the the, the supper of the Lord was such a special time um, at my father's church, and I learned to have reverence for the supper. He didn't rush it. I mean, we had baptism and Lord's supper. Every first Sunday night, I said night. See, some of y'all couldn't even be in, y'all couldn't have been a member of that church because it, it, we had night church. And listen, boy, they would bake that bread. And boy, they had that real wine, y'all, that Mogan David wine. Y'all ain't talking. Now y'all got Alizé and all that. <laughs> Woo! What is this? Oh, Remy, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, pray for me, don't judge me. <laughs> but, but it was the blood. It was, it was the blood. It was special. And, and, and I, I don't ever want us to lose the reverence of the supper. My daddy would say, it ain't the Lord's breakfast. It ain't the Lord's brunch. <laughs> it's the Lord's supper. But I pray, beloved, as our heads are bowed and as our eyes are closed, I want to I wanna bless it. I want to pray for this cup that I have. And while you're getting your cup.
consecrated elements, whatever you consecrate becomes holy. We've said that this month, and I pray that you, you've recognized that whether it's wine or whether it's juice or whether it's a wafer or whether it's bread, there's meaning in the song. Father, we thank you today that we know that God, it doesn't have to be at night, it doesn't have to be in the morning, but you said as often as we would do it, do it in remembrance of you. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for reverence. Thank you for relationship. Bless the bread, bless the cup today as we take this as a family because we know everything we need is in Jesus. And all the people of God said together, Amen. The Bible says, and he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it. He gave it to the disciples and said, this is my body. Let us eat together. Oh, the blood. down on your job, you're supposed to open this for me. Amen. Hallelujah. And he took the cup of wine and he blessed it. And he said, drink ye all of it. Let's drink together. I'm healed by the power of his word. I'm healed by the power of His Word. I'm healed. I'm healed by the power of His Word. I'm healed by the power of His Word. One more time, be healed, be healed by the power of His Word. Be healed by the power of His Word. Get happy and take happy when you say, you're healed, you're healed by the power. yoke-breaking word from God and our pastor who delivered it. Let us hide it in our hearts that it would bless each one of us according to our need. No matter how we feel, let us always prioritize being the church and sharing the love of Jesus Christ. While we are present in our bodies, let us never become slaves to them, but let us rather command our flesh to bow to the spirit of the one true living God. As we go throughout the week and throughout the rest of our lives, let us walk in the power we have as servants of the Lord, not only being churchgoers, but servants of the Lord and carriers of your glory in our everyday lives. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to smile and shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. May he bless you in your labor and in your leisure, in your laughter and in your tears, until that day when we shall meet at the feet of Jesus, where there will be no sunrise nor sunset. Amen. Hello.
Hello, I'm Stephanie Boutte, former teenage mother and single parent. Today, I'm the president of Turnian Training and Education Center. I understand the challenges and struggles of not having the necessary skills to earn a quality living. Not knowing where you are going and how you're going to get there is not a good place to be. T-TECH is dedicated to excellence in our education and vocational training division. We are currently enrolling in medical assisting, accounting specialists, IT, and fiber optics. Call us today. Greetings, Skaz family and friends. I'm Deacon Jones, and I'm here today to speak on our pastor, Talmadge Day Thomas. During the month of August, we will be celebrating him in two way major ways. Number one, we celebrate 40 years of him preaching the gospel. And number two, 55 years of life. So if you would, join me in sowing a seed for our pastor in the sum of $95 to celebrate the two major milestones he's celebrating this month. The ways to give can be seen on the bottom of the screen. Please be blessed and thank you.